Hello, I'm Sam Jones. I've been in this business a number of years, and it's been my honor to have talked with people from all walks of life, from the greats, the famous, the heroes, the talented, the desperate, and many more. Most were doing their best to follow a true moral compass. In so doing, they left our lives a little bit richer. Such a person passed through my life recently, and today I want to share the experience. I'd like for you to join me when we come back. This story begins 101 years ago. Woodrow Wilson was president of the United States at the time. The Industrial Revolution had already changed the world, which now seemed to be turning faster and faster. Change was the order. Additionally, during that 101 year period, conflict became the norm. World War I came along and shook America to its very core. Most didn't understand why we were fighting, only that our country needed troops to keep the other side off our shores. The stock market crashed in 1929. Fortunes were lost. Millions of Americans were out of work overnight. People struggled for years just to survive hunger and despair. There were no jobs to be had, and for the most part, only those with places to plant crops and knew how to can, had chickens or pigs, or a few head of cattle, could squeeze out enough to survive. It wasn't until Franklin Roosevelt was elected in 1933 that jobs started to materialize and the recovery began. And as if that weren't enough, the dirty 30s followed. The great dust storms that carried dirt and sand across this land of ours from at least seven states blew all the way to the Gulf on the south and as far as Washington and New York to the east. It was said more dirt was moved during that period than all the dirt carved out of the earth to make the Erie Canal. Then came the Cold War. Then December 7, 1941, the Japanese launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. President Roosevelt called that day a date which will live in infamy. He asked for and was given a declaration of war. It was our entry into World War II. Years later, the Korean conflict came. Then the Vietnam War. Man also walked on the moon in that period and came home to tell about it. Along the way, the country and her people were changing, marked by demonstrations from coast to coast. Over the years, one thing remained a constant, the American spirit. The flame of that spirit burned brightly in all Americans, but especially so in a backwoods mother of 10 children whose husband was seriously wounded in World War II. She says hers was a farm life from the very beginning. She also says as far back as she could remember, she, her mother and dad, and the rest of the family lived in log cabins. She was the third of four girls born to George Washington Brumley and Nora Elizabeth Springer. And she learned to carve, build, and play the fiddle at an early age from her dad. She married Adrian Hensley while she was still in her teens. Home today is Yellville, Arkansas. And of all the honors that have come her way, one is of special importance. Arkansas officially named her an Arkansas treasure. To my way of thinking, she's really a national treasure. You're about to meet her, but know this. She has graced this earth for 101 years. Violet Hensley has, for almost half a century, been a featured performer at Silver Dollar City. She's played on the Grand Ole Opry a couple of times, and any number of appearances on nationwide network television shows. She's also a great, great, great grandmother. Ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna meet Violet Hensley, accompanied by another well-known fiddle player, Jana Jay, right after this.